Well, here we are with the uh, 65 Galaxy, and if um, you don't watch any of my videos, um, I'm from Iowa, and right now I, I'm in Virginia. I drove 1,400 miles to get here, and I'll be here for three months doing an internship for Amadis Industries. Uh, they make peanut harvesters, I guess, but some other stuff. But anyway, the point of this video here is, you know, it gets awful hot, like 95 degrees, and um, I burned up one of my um, electric pumps. Um, luckily, Summit was kind of sending me a new one, but I had it set up in a deadhead style, and it would get really hot. But even in a deadhead system, my fuel in the lines would just get really, really hot, and it would start to boil, and you could actually see it bubbling up um, through this glass filter here. So um, it wasn't a good situation. So... Um, I didn't really want to spend a lot of money as I wasn't sure if it was the problem, but what I ended up making was um, a return line. And how I did this is just basically what you can see here is uh, um, I went into a T fitting like this and then put an angle to my carburetor and took a T and then that one goes back to the gas tank. And the rubber line ends right down there and it's metal all the way back. I don't even like having this much rubber line, but... You know, I kind of got to make do with what I have here in Virginia. So, um, anyway, that's pretty simplistic. And what I did here is, if you see the this little sectioned piece, if you can see this bump here. Now what I did is I took a bolt and that, uh, you know, would fit snugly in there, but yet I could still get in that 3 8 hose. And I drilled a 60 thousandths hole in it. And that's what I believe the hole is on... Um, fuel pressure regulators that have a return on them. So, um, anyway, that seems to work great. And I hold good solid pressure still. And it's just been really nice. My biggest problem um, with my fuel boiling is I got an O2 gauge in my car. And you'll have to forgive how um, cluttered my car is right now. Nice boot drink holder. But you can see over there, um, you know, I got a vacuum gauge sitting up on the dash there too, but on that O2 gauge in the ashtray, I can watch it go lean when I sit in traffic. It'll go from a nice 13 and a half to one idle all the way up to 17 and a half um, part, you know, air fuel. So that's not good. That's not what you want. So since I put this system on and it circulates the fuel and keeps it nice and cool, um, I don't have any of those problems. Um, with the fuel boiling and leaning out and just, you know, bad running in traffic. And, you know, I got a big aluminum radiator on here, so at least I don't have overheating issues. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, yeah, it works really good. Um, I'd recommend with these electric pumps that you have a return line because, um, you know, it quieted my big Holly blue pump way down. It got really quiet when I uh, made that swap, so... It was well worth it. But anyway, I'll flip it on here and you can see the return coming into my fuel cell. Again, you'll have to forgive you know, my clutter. I pretty much have to have all my tools in this car and I'll be down here for three months. So I gotta do a lot of trusting of this car here. So, um, I mean, you know, relying on it. But anyway, we'll flip our switches here and you can hear that pump. And it's not too loud when the car's running. So, because it's bleeding off even more fuel into the carburetor. But you see here, I don't have issues now with pressure creep because it's bleeding off the return line where before with this electric pump, it would also have pressure creep issues where if the car was off, that thing would be going all the way to like 12 and blowing into the carburetor and everything. So you can see there, got a solid um, seven pounds. So we got enough restriction in there to keep pressure, but yet still probably can't hear it, but you can see some of the ripples in the fuel. Um, you know, our return line's doing its job and it should save the pump. So the pump will last a lot longer. Um, shut her down here, but, uh, I do. I had. I did try it on a mechanical pump, and I don't recommend doing that. Um, it just it couldn't hold enough pressure, and I have a big Holly pump. 
that, uh, you know, I had to actually make a plate since I've been down here to cover it up, but I did have a mechanical pump and you know, it just, it just wouldn't cut it with the return line. It wouldn't build enough pressure. I was only bumping around it like four or five and I like to run seven pounds of pressure. So, um, anyway, overall, you know, that's kind of my return line system. You can see there, you know, obviously I could cut this shorter here and I got some fine tuning to do, but you know, it runs real good. So we'll go and kick her over here and let her run. So turn our ignition on, all our electrical crap and our pump. And we'll key it in here and give her a pump. And also with this setup, I don't have any heat soak issues. So you see until the intake manifold warms back up because we're pretty cold, that number is gonna be pretty high, but it'll get down to 13 and a half as it warms up. There we go, it's coming down. So, but yeah, you don't hear the pump now and it's bleeding off into the carburetor as well. So it's really not putting a lot of strain on that pump. Here we are with our 289. Holding a solid seven pounds of pressure. So anyway there you go um return lines it's really saved me in traffic and i can just drive this car in any weather any circumstances it holds up great so pretty much there you go fuel return line it's the uh it's the way to go with these classic rides